Man, finding B-roll for this one is gonna be a nightmare. Hey everyone, this is Nick, and not all open source software is created equal. The rights you have regarding this software is defined in the license that's attached to the software. And while most of them mean that you can get basically any rights you want over the code, some are more permissive and some are more restrictive. So let's take a look at the most commonly used licenses for free and open source software and which rights they actually grant you. Just like today's sponsor is gonna grant you $100 to get your own Linux or gaming server. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode is the best choice to deploy your own Linux or gaming server. Getting started is extremely easy thanks to their app marketplace. You can just pick from one of the many, many apps they offer select a few configuration options and just one click deploy that server. It's super simple. It works for a development environment, but also for a Minecraft or Valheim server. Among the most notable apps, Linode has Moodle to create your own learning management system and teach and sell courses in minutes, but they also have stuff like Pi-hole to block ads. You can block mine, but it's gonna make me even poorer. From Focal Board, a Trello alternative to Rocket Chat, which is the equivalent to Slack or Teams, Linode has everything you would want. Click the link in the description to get your $100 credits and get started. Okay, let's begin with the GNU General Public License or GPL. In 2021, the GPL and all its versions and variants represented about 21% of all FAST licenses used. Yes, I'm saying variants and versions because the GPL is used in many forms, namely the GPL version 3, its older version, GPL v2, and also its lesser versions, the LGPL. Yes, fragmentation also exists for licenses. The original GPL was created by Richard Stallman for the GNU project in 1989. It's what we call a copyleft license, which means that someone using code licensed under the GPL can't decide to make that code proprietary or private, nor can they do that to any modifications they brought to the code. All modifications made have to be redistributed under the same terms. The GPL generally gives you the right to download and use, modify and redistribute the code using the license without any restrictions. Now, the various variants of the GPL have a few important differences. The GPL version 3 compared to version 2 is more comprehensive and more in line with how modern code is written and distributed. It adds three main clauses a compatibility clause that makes it easier to mix different licenses on the same project, something the GPL version 2 made a bit more difficult. There's a digital rights management clause that was made to prevent the use of GPL software in products that would infringe on users' privacy, like the DMCA Act. And there's a patent clause that ensures that every user of patented code is protected in the same way, if, for example, a patent applies to the code that's under the GPL. Now, the lesser GPL, or LGPL, is another variant of the license that makes it easier to use GPL code inside of your project without spreading the GPL to the whole project, as long as the work is considered non-derivative, something that is a bit vague and generally considered a legal issue more than a licensing issue. A lot of projects use the GPL, like the Linux kernel, most new software, WordPress, Notepad++, or Git. Also, any project under the GPL can be sold by the original creator or anyone else, whether they modified the code or not. But the person who bought that software has every right to redistribute the code for free themselves. Basically, the GPL and all of its variants are what we call the true free software license. They prevent code from being turned proprietary and they let you do basically whatever else you want with it. Now, it's important to note that you only have to redistribute your code that you changed if your project is made public. If, for example, I decided to modify the Linux kernel for my own use case, I wouldn't be forced to publish all the modifications that I made to that Linux kernel. Not that I would be able to do that because the closest thing I ever did to coding was writing a graphical RPG on my Casio calculator. Now, another much used license is the MIT license, with about 31% of FAST projects using it in 2021. It's been created by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT, 
And it's also a free software license that grants you the rights to copy, modify, merge, or distribute the code. It's a very permissive license, much more flexible than the GPL, as it doesn't restrict what you can do with the code you're using. There is no copyleft or copyright included, so you can include code licensed under the MIT license in your proprietary software and not redistribute any of your changes, which makes projects licensed under the MIT license a treasure trove for a lot of companies. You get free work that will probably be maintained by someone else that you can include in your proprietary project and not redistribute any of your changes. Provided, of course, that you do include a copy of the MIT license in your project, which is a very small price to pay. The MIT license is used in some form or another by a lot of projects, like the X11 display server, .NET Core, Angular, React, Node.js, or jQuery. The MIT license also allows you to sell your work or someone else's work, even without modifications. Now onto the Apache license, also used a lot by 14% of fast projects in 2021. The Apache license is some form of middle ground between the GPL and the MIT license. It grants you all the freedoms of downloading, using, modifying, distributing and selling software using the license, whether it's for personal, internal or commercial use. These rights include copyrights and patents, so anyone who contributed to the project grants everyone else a right to all patents they might have on that specific code, with additional protections if future work contributed by someone else infringes on a patent that you have. In that case, your patent is still valid and protected, since you didn't contribute the code infringing on the patent yourself. You didn't grant a right to that patent because you didn't include work that makes use of that patent yourself in the code. The Apache license isn't a copyleft license like the GPL, which means your modifications don't have to use the Apache license. But the original work must still be published under the Apache license and every modification has to be labeled clearly. So everything you add on top of a project licensed under the Apache license can be using any license you want. It can even be proprietary. But the original project must still be licensed under the Apache license. You can't change its license. So in that, it's in between the GPL that makes all your modifications GPL as well, and the MIT license that allows you to make the original code proprietary inside of your project. That specific license is used by Android, the Apache HTTP server, Kubernetes, or the Open3D engine. Then we have the BSD license, which is a low restriction type of license. It was created by the Berkeley Source Distribution Project, known as BSD, originally in 1969. There are multiple variants, but most grant the same freedoms to download, use, modify, redistribute the software, as long as the copyright notice and the license are included. The BSD license doesn't force any modification to be distributed under the terms of the BSD license. Compared to the MIT license, the BSD license is basically similar, apart from the fact that you can't promote your derived software using the name of the license. So you can't say, my project is awesome because it is endorsed by BSD, just because you have the BSD license. That, that's not allowed. Compared to the Apache license, the BSD license is less clear about patent rights and doesn't force someone who's distributing modified code to include a notice of all changes. The BSD license, being more permissive, is also more compatible with other licenses, like the GPL v2, compared to the Apache v2, which isn't, which is also what prompted the creation of the GPL v3. As with most licenses used by open source or free software, you can definitely sell work that's licensed under the BSD license, even if you're not the original author. But licenses don't only apply to code. You can also license your creative work like a book, a video, a drawing, any form of photo or art, basically anything you create can be covered by a license. And one of the most well-known and used is the Creative Commons. And boy, is this one fragmented. If you thought we had too many distros, we definitely do have too many Creative Commons licenses. The Creative Commons lets people use your copyrighted work without having to contact you to know if and how they can make use of what you created. There are six types of that license, which define what you can do and how you can use the work. These licenses are maintained by a non-profit, which means that it's up to you to check if people actually respect the license. 
much like with code, which generally is a problem for free and open source software. There is no real simple way to check if a proprietary project has based its work under the GPL but not redistributed any of their changes. It's just very complicated to check. Now, what are the various types of Creative Commons? First, you have the basic attribution, which applies to all Creative Commons licenses. They let people distribute, remix, adapt, and build upon your work, even commercially, as long as they credit the original author. Then you have the share alike license, that is basically the copyleft version, which means that any modification to the original work also has to be shared under the Creative Commons share alike license. The non derivative license means you can reuse the work, even commercially, but you can't share it if you modified it. The non commercial license lets people use, modify, and distribute their modifications, but they can't sell it or use it for a commercial purpose. They don't have to respect the same license for their modifications though. Which is why there's also the non-commercial share-alike variant, which forces all your modifications to be distributed under the same share-alike non-commercial license. And finally, there's the most restrictive one, the non-commercial share-alike non-derivative license, which basically means you can't distribute any modifications to the work or use the original work in commercial form. All my videos are distributed under the Creative Commons non-commercial share-alike license, which is probably something I should write somewhere in the description of my videos at some point. Basically, you can grab any of my videos, you can modify them and share them again, as long as you're not trying to make a profit from them or trying to copyright them as well. Which, I'm looking at you, baby woke. If you're using my face in your videos, you are not authorized to monetize them. Sorry. Okay, so that only covers a few of the major licenses. There are a ton more, and differences can be pretty minor or pretty major. Mostly, what you need to remember is the difference between copyleft licenses, which extend to all the modifications you bring to the original project, and more permissive licenses, which let you do basically anything you want with different ways of handling attribution, copyright, and patents. And if you just create stuff that isn't code, the Creative Commons is basically your go-to. Just choose the one that limits or authorizes everything that you want to let people do with it. Finally, almost no license used in open source or free software prevents the sale of a project. Whether you're the original author or whether you added any modifications on top of it, even if it's just a rebrand, you have the right to take that code and sell it as long as you keep redistributing it. Free software doesn't mean free of charge. I hope this brought a bit more clarity to the various licenses our projects use, and that it made the FOSS jargon a little bit more digest. What's always very digest though, is this segue to today's sponsor, Tuxedo. These guys make laptops and desktops running Linux out of the box. You can install any distro of your choosing afterwards, but you can also get one shipping with the distro you like immediately. They have a huge range of keyboard layouts, they ship worldwide, even though they're based in Germany, and they have an enormous range of devices, from the smallest Nox and, and the smallest Ultrabooks to the biggest gaming PCs or gaming or workstation laptops. They recently refreshed their Stellaris 15, which is their high-end gaming laptop or workstation laptop, and it now has 12th gen Intel CPUs, Nvidia RDX 3080s, well, up to 3080s, and it's just a wonderful device with a 3K panel, the best keyboard I ever used in any laptop, period, and great I.O. I should receive a review unit for this new model pretty soon with my logo engraved on the back because that's something that Tuxedo can also do for you. And I will probably buy it afterwards to use for my own on-the-go video editing needs. So if you need a new device running Linux, check out the link in the description below, click it and see what Tuxedo has to offer their really cool products. Now, thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments as well. And since we all know we're all rolling around in cash right now, why not give a little bit to me by clicking on the super thanks button or clicking on my PayPal link in the description of the video, or by joining my Patreon or YouTube members. Both get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!